So last year in a video, I mentioned a trending topic in regenerative medicine. One of those was intraosseous injections for knee osteoarthritis. So historically, when treating a joint with regenerative medicine, initially we first started treating the joint by just injecting the solution right into the joint. After a few years, we started doing more things like injecting the supporting ligaments. And we noticed as we did that, it helped optimize the outcomes. Now we're starting to see people inject the bone surrounding the joint. Joints are quite fascinating. They have this cartilage that lines the weight bearing part of the joint. The cartilage is very smooth, so it limits the friction with movement. At the same time, it's very strong, so it can handle the 10 times body weight force put through the joint with things like jumping and running. Cartilage is also avascular, so it requires passive diffusion of nutrients through not only the joint fluid, but also through the subchondral bone. So now with arthritis, we see breakdown of the cartilage, but we also see uh, inflammation in the joint fluid, which feeds the breakdown of the cartilage. We also see changes to the adjacent bone. All of this part of the wear and tear process of the joint. So as researchers continue to look at how to treat the joint with regenerative medicine, they've recently been exploring more the idea of injecting the adjacent bone or the subchondral bone. I think it was a few years ago when I first heard about this topic at a conference where there was a researcher presenting his data. At first I thought, what? this doesn't make any sense. Why would you take PRP and put it into the bone marrow if PRP is derived from the blood, which is derived from the bone marrow? So it didn't make any sense to me at the time. But maybe I guess it's related to the bone being pathologic or unhealthy and the PRP can be beneficial. So over the years, I've seen more and more studies discussing intraosseous injections of platelet-rich plasma, either alone or in combination with an intraarticular injection. So in this systematic review in the Journal of Cartilage in 2021, they concluded that intraosseous injections can be regarded as minimally invasive and safe procedures to address subchondral bone damage. With the goal of delaying joint replacement, we're offering a salvage option to those not eligible for replacement. So the big question is how do you get this PRP into the bone? Well, there's two options. One, you can use a trocar, which is a very thick needle, and we use that to either hammer or drill into the bone. This is also what we use when we're doing a bone marrow aspiration. Another author described a more gentler approach to getting into the bone. He used a 25 gauge needle, which is the same size we use to inject the skin, so very thin. And we'd find a little crack along the cortex of the bone, and he'd sneak in under ultrasound guidance, and he was able to get the needle into the bone where he needed to put the platelet-rich plasma. So overall, an interesting new option for treating knee osteoarthritis with regenerative medicine. In my experience, our patients tolerate this very well compared to injecting the ligaments with PRP. That's much more painful. Feel free to comment below with any questions or if you are in the organ area, feel free to stop by. Until next time.